Three more complexion products and then we're done. I swear on oh, my back. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Welcome me back to my channel. It feels so good to get behind the camera and film again. As you could see, we are in a new location. I moved. Lots of changes have happened since I've been on YouTube last and I'm really happy to be back. So today we are going to do my top beauty favorites of 2021. I know I'm really late on the bandwagon, but better late than never. I fell in love with so many beauty products last year. I tried out so many new things. Some things were recommendations from you guys on social media. Others were recommendations from my coworkers at work. And I have a ton to share with you from primers to setting spray foundation to setting powder. Literally every step of your makeup routine, I have something for you. So be sure to thumbs up the video if you do like today's video. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you want to see next in 2022 and let me know what some of your beauty favorites were for 2021 and be sure to subscribe to the channel before you leave today. We have over 300 subscribers already and I wasn't even filming all of 2021. So I'm super, super grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you for coming to my channel, liking my videos, subscribing and leaving me comments. It means so much to me and I'm really excited for what 2022 has in store. Without further ado, let's get into these beauty favorites because I have quite a lot. So starting off with primer, if you've been watching my channel since I've started, you will know I'm a big, big fan of the NARS Radiance Primer. This guy is like almost done. I already have to repurchase. I love this primer because it feels like a moisturizer. It's super nourishing on the skin and there's really nothing bad to say about it. When I would sell this in store, people would kind of get turned off because it does have that peach tint to it. But when you rub it into the skin, it really doesn't have a tint at all. I think that's just the glow that it gives. But even so, it's not like a chunky shimmery glow. It's just a natural radiance to the skin. It is a radiance primer. It's really hard to describe, but it just looks so good on the skin. My skin drinks this up like water. It doesn't matter whether I'm wearing a glowy foundation, a matte foundation, it lays beautifully under everything. But all I know is that this is so pretty. And if you are combo oily or combo dry, I really think you'll like this primer. Whoever I recommended it to in 2021 also fell in love with it. So definitely give this a shot. And if you do, let me know in the comments below what you think of it. Next, I have three foundations to talk about. One is a medium to full coverage foundation, and then two are more skin tints. Skin tints were really, really big in 2021. Everyone was hopping on the skin tint bandwagon along with myself, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the full coverage foundation first because it literally is my favorite thing on the planet. I'm wearing it today and it looks beautiful every single time I put it on. I always get comments about what I'm wearing and typically it's this guy. So this is the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue Foundation. If you know me, if you've been on my channel, if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that nine times out of 10, I'm wearing this foundation. It wears beautifully. It's not a flat matte foundation. It's not a super oily dewy foundation. It is a demi matte. That's how I describe it. It is matte, but it also moves with your skin. It gives you a little bit of glow and it just looks good with anything that I pair it with. It's not a foundation that when you apply it, it's really stiff and difficult to move. It moves really well with the skin and that's super important to me because I want it to lay nicely on my skin. I don't want it to accentuate texture or fine lines or acne marks or anything like that. And this foundation just outperformed all the rest this year. I love the coverage of it. I'm wearing it today and I think it looks beautiful every time I put it on or every time I wear it out. I always get comments about what I'm wearing and it's typically this. I am in the shade 113 light. There is a foundation conversion chart on their website. That's what helped me pick out the shade of foundation. I just can't say enough good things about this foundation. It is so beautiful. I do have a discount code with Dose of Colors. The discount code is EMILY20 and it'll save you some money off your purchase if you do wanna try out this fabulous foundation. 
If not, regardless of the promo code, try out the foundation anyway, because it is so, so beautiful. You will not regret it. It is the best. Moving on to skin tints, I do have two to talk about. So I think I got this guy in spring of 2021, if I'm not mistaken. I know I did an IG reel about like my everyday base routine, and this was the foundation or skin tint I was using. It's the Urban Decay Stay Naked Hydromaniac Tinted Glow Hydrator long name, but the product is beautiful. It looks stunning on the skin. It gives you super glowy, healthy, radiant, glossy skin. The thing I was most excited about when this first came out was the fact that it has kombucha and marula oil in it. So this is super glowy. It's going to give you glowy, dewy skin. I am combination oily, so my T-zone gets oily throughout the day. So when I wear this, I do get a little shiny, but I don't mind shine in my skin because I think that it makes the skin look naturally radiant. And I just love a glowy look to the skin. Like I've never been opposed to a shiny forehead, but that's just me. If you are more on the oily side and you don't like super glowy makeup, this might not be for you. But I will say on the days where you just wanna be out the door, have something quick and easy and don't mind a radiant glow to the skin, this is so, so beautiful. I cannot tell you how many people I put on to this skin tint. It is fabulous. The only thing I don't like about this is the color range is so not great. <laughs> like there's like, I think nine or 10 shades and some of them are just straight up orange. So, I mean, I'm sorry about that if you wanna try it and you can't find your perfect match. I know that's kind of annoying. I hope they do extend the shade range because this is the best skin tint I've tried all year. Like it is flipping fantastic. I can't say enough good things about it and I do highly recommend it. The next skin tint product I'm gonna talk about, I'm not even sure I can promote it as a skin tint because it's technically like a skin glow product that you could put under makeup, you could use on its own, you could use over makeup. It really is super versatile. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I know I'm not the only person that loves this. It is so pretty, so radiant, and so glossy on the skin. It really does make your skin look like you have a filter on. Now, what I like about this, not only the doe foot applicator, I don't know why, but like just smearing this on my face and having it be so quick and easy is like fun for me. I don't know, I'm strange. But I just love the glow that this gives your skin. It gives you like, I'm wearing makeup, but my skin's also just naturally fab. And who doesn't want to be naturally fab? Like this is fantastic. I typically will wear this with a full coverage concealer. So underneath my eyes in my T-zone, wherever I need a little bit of extra coverage. I think I did a look on my YouTube channel and I'll link it down below if I did, where I just used this as foundation and then I put a full coverage concealer over it. And when my skin's behaving, it looks so good. It's not heavy. It feels like my skin can breathe totally fine. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything, but my skin just looks immaculate when I have it on. I have used this under foundation as well, and I'm wearing it today along with my NARS Radiance Primer, just on the high points of the cheeks, just to kind of prep for my highlight. And I do love that, but the way that I love applying this is just on its own, because I think it's the perfect your skin but better skin tint. I can't tell you what this does for my skin, but it looks so beautiful. If you haven't tried this out already, I do highly recommend it. It is just so beautiful and so unique. I think you will absolutely love it if you do end up trying it. Moving on to concealer, I also have three concealers that I have been obsessed with this year. I have a lot of complexion products that I rotate through and they're all beautiful in their own way. So I'm gonna start off with a new launch in 2021 that I fell in love with instantly is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Magic Touch Concealer. I'm in the shade three. I love this concealer. It is so full coverage. It is creamy, it is buttery. It doesn't crease into your fine lines. It doesn't feel cakey or heavy. It doesn't accentuate texture. It is just the nicest concealer if you want full coverage, but you don't want heavy cakey makeup. It sets beautifully. It looks beautiful on the skin. The color range is amazing. There's a shade for everyone. Anastasia really did that with this concealer. It is so beautiful. I cannot say enough good things about it. It just wears really nice. Like when I put it on and that highlight comes through, I'm like, okay, all right, this is, this is going down. This is 
This is what glam is all about. The heat just came on, so I know you're gonna hear that and I'm sorry. The next concealer I'm gonna talk about today is probably no surprise, it is the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue Concealer. I am in the shade 10 Light. What I love about this concealer is that it sets so fast, and I know that sounds silly, but because it sets so quickly, it doesn't settle into any fine lines, it doesn't accentuate texture, it doesn't crease, and if you know me, I crease like none other, and this is like a crease-proof concealer. Nothing will crease with this concealer. It is so good. It's funny because like all the shades of concealer that I am are going to be completely different. So that's the Anastasia and that's the Dose of Colors. Pretty big difference. Sometimes I mix them. Sometimes I'll use one or the other. But I love this concealer to pair with the foundation. It pairs well with any complexion product that I've used it with. And it's definitely a love of mine for 2021. The next concealer I'm going to talk about is more of an honorable mention, but I did use quite a bit of it in 2021. As you can see, it is the Dior Forever Concealer. Now, what I love about this concealer is that it just moves with your skin really beautifully. It looks very skin-like. This does give you the model skin effect if you're going for something that's smooth and glowy and just beautiful. I can't describe the wear of this foundation. I do find that when I use it underneath my eyes, because I do have veins that pop through, I might have to go in with two layers. So it's something that you do have to build up, but it doesn't matter to me because I still think the coverage is really, really beautiful and the finish is flawless. So I do highly recommend this concealer if you are somebody that likes something more on the medium coverage spectrum that you can build up, but you can wear it every day. You can with it with foundation, without foundation, with a skin tint. You can really do whatever you want with this product because it's just so beautiful. Like there's not much more I could say about it other than it's really, really seamless on the skin. In this one, I am the shade 1.5N. Again, this color range is fabulous. I highly recommend this. Moving on to bronzers. I have two bronzers to talk about today. I have a cream and a powder. The first is a cream. I use it as a base for my powder bronzer. It's the Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Bronzer in the shade Amber. I have used and abused this guy like none other. It's kind of janky on the inside, but it is so so buttery on the skin. I think it's the perfect shade for light to medium skin tones. A little bit goes a very long way. You don't need a lot of this product at all. And I just love that when I use this, I don't have to use as much bronzing powder. So my skin looks more skin-like and less heavy. I really love how buttery and smooth this bronzer is. And it just melts into the skin really, really beautifully. You don't need to fight with this to blend it out. It just goes right into the skin. And it's the perfect bronze shade. I could use this when I'm tan. I can use this when I'm not tan. It really is versatile. And the formula is amazing because it's not super dewy. So it sets nicely. I've used cream bronzers in the past that don't set down. And then even when you put a bronzing powder on top, it might cling to a patch. This doesn't do that at all. It sets down to a velvety finish, and I just think this is fabulous. When Anastasia came out with her cream products, I was quick to pick them up because I knew they were gonna be amazing because Anastasia complexion products are chef's kiss, and this did not disappoint. The color range for these bronzers are also insane. You have a shade for the fairest of fair and the deepest of deep. It's so incredibly versatile and it's so inclusive. I think that Anastasia did a fabulous job with the color selection in all of her complexion products this year. I really think that if you try this out, you will love it. I've recommended this to so many people and every time I recommend a product, they love it. I'm a, I'm a complexion girl. I know what I'm talking about. Try this bronzer. To set my cream bronzer, I will always go in with the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Dark Tan. This is just a perfect bronzer shade for me. I really haven't found anything that I love more than this in like two years. This is my second one. I've used this so consistently and I just, I don't know, like I'm already starting to hit pan on this. It's kind of sad that I use it so much. It's the perfect bronze shade. It's deep enough to where I can deepen up the temples of my cheekbones and then it fades out beautifully. The mineralized skin finish formula does look like skin. So paired over the cream bronzer or used on its own, it is stunning. And then the benefit from it is that if you wanted to, you can use it as an eyeshadow if you wanted like a quick look. I never do a quick look, but if you wanted to, or you are a more of a 
on the go natural girl you might actually really really love this i love the formula i can't say enough good things about it this is just a tried and true holy grail product of mine moving on to blush i'm like scared to start talking about blush because i have so many blushes here i tried to minimize it as much as possible but i will say i do rotate through these guys quite frequently so whatever I'm recommending, I do use quite often. So I'm gonna start off with the blush launch that broke the internet this year. Definitely the Melt Cosmetics Cream Blush Lights and Powder Blushes. These two are literally my everyday go-to staples. I use these all the time. The powder blush, I definitely use all the time, regardless of the cream that I'm using underneath. But if I'm using a cream, I'll use Honey Thief. And then the powder that I love to pair any cream blush with is Cali Dream. These are just stunning. I love the formula of the cream blush lights. It's like water, butter, everything in between. Like it just blends perfectly. And when you put your finger into it, it just, it comes off. You don't have to fight with it. It is fabulous. It is amazing. I will say these are really, really pigmented. A little bit does go a long way. So when you first apply it, just dab your brush in it and then apply it to the cheekbone. I'll always bring my blush up to like my temple area and then fade it out. A little, like I said, a little goes a long way with this guy. I have gone overboard, but nothing a little beauty blender with some extra concealer can't fix. It's so beautiful. It'll last you a long time. And the shade range is really pretty. They have beautiful pinks and peaches, some bronzy shades. I really, really love it. Honey Thief is my absolute favorite though. I think it brightens up the skin so beautifully. And what I love about Cali Dream is it's just the perfect peach blush i used to be a big fan of milani luminoso but they changed the formulation and i'm really sad about it but not as sad after i found this guy this blush is just the perfect peach blush it's perfect for me i'm wearing it today like i said i'm almost always wearing cali dream from melt it is just fabulous i highly recommend it if you do like a peach blush and then even if you don't if you like something deeper if you like more terracotta colors or lighter pink they do have it i highly highly recommend you try this formula i do have two more cream blush formulas to talk about i really love cream blush because i think that it really livens up the blush that you put on top of it blush was a really big trend starting in 2020 but really coming alive in 2021 and blush is like my new favorite thing so yeah i have a lot to talk about this is the Anastasia Cream Blush in the shade Peachy Keen. As you could tell, I'm a really big peach blush person. I love this color. It is so, so pretty on the skin. It's just the perfect peach. It's just such a pretty shade. I love the way that this livens up and brightens up the cheekbone. It looks stunning. It blends into the skin like butter. I cannot say enough good things about it. And the color range, again, love, love, love the color range. This is fire, peachy keen. And then there's also one called caramel that is deeper and it is so yummy. I just, I can't wait for you guys to try these blushes. Last but not least, and I promise we are done talking about blush after this, is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension Blush Palette. This was holiday of 2021. And specifically this shade, this is the shade She's a Doll. Oh, I was not a pink baby doll bubblegum blush person until I tried that shade. This is flipping gorgeous. If you just want to feel like a princess and feel girly and bubbly and adorable, it's just, it's the best blush. I literally can't even describe how I felt when I saw it. When I saw it, I was like, that's pink. And then I was like, you know what? I need this blush palette because Babs Beauty here on YouTube recommended it. And she loves a cream blush too. So whatever she recommends, I'm like running and putting into my cart. And I got this blush palette. I snatched it up and I love it. I think it's perfect if you are a makeup artist. I love that it's compact. It has three cream blushes and three mattes. Really, really beautiful. I need to dip into these two shades more. I haven't really tried them because I'm just obsessed with She's It All. I never thought I would love a pink blush as much as I love this one. So if you haven't already snatched this up and it is still available, I again I, I highly recommend everything i'm talking about because these products are bomb and you'll love this it is just a scrumptious blush palette we're getting there people i feel like after complexion that's like over half the battle and we're almost done kind of not really 
But for setting powder, I do have two. I have a translucent setting powder and then I have a pressed powder. So for translucent powder, Huda Beauty Baking Powder. I've had this guy since like 2020 or 2019, one or the other. Probably need a new one. But this powder is so buttery smooth. I have never tried a powder and haven't tried a powder since this one that gives me the same finely milled set, doesn't look cakey, doesn't look dry, doesn't accentuate my expression lines, doesn't settle into my forehead lines, doesn't make me look dry. Like this is just the truth. This is amazing. My friend Anna recommended this powder to me. I think she was using it on a live or mentioned it on an Instagram story. And ever since she recommended it, I just, I've been addicted to this powder. I have tried other ones in the past and I just don't like them as much. And I don't know if I'll ever stop using this. Maybe this year will be the year that I do, but I don't see that happening in the foreseeable future because this thing is just bomb. I do use this in the shade Cupcake. It has like a little pinky undertone, but like it doesn't look pink on the skin whatsoever. When I bought it, I bought it because Anna said the pink tone will brighten up the skin. And I completely agree. I think that every time I do use it, my skin looks bright. It looks radiant. And I just use it to set my T-zone. So wherever I have concealer and I don't want to dull out that area. So I really like the way this layers over my concealer. She does have a lot of other shades and a translucent shade if you just want clear. I really recommend you trying this out. I think you will fall in love with it. For compact powder, I love me some Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder from Charlotte Tilbury. Y'all know this is so finely milled, so brightening, so beautiful. I do have the shade 2 Medium. I wish I had the shade Fair because these do go a little bit deeper on the skin than what they look like in the pan. But regardless, I love this shade. I use it to touch up throughout the day. This is what I typically have in my bag for touch ups or if I find that my under eyes looking a little bit dull after my makeup, I will dust it on underneath. Or if I put on too much setting spray, which typically happens, I will go ahead and kind of blot my skin with this and just kind of tone down the glow. This is such a good powder to touch up with throughout the day. I love this guy. Three more complexion products and then we're done. I swear, oh my, my back. Moving on to highlighters. I have two that I've been back and forth with all year. First one is the Melt Cosmetics Digital Dust Highlighter in the shade Stargazer. I think I bought this when they were having a sale. They do have sales quite often, which is really awesome. I, I do stock up when they do have their sales, but as you can see, I've used quite a bit of it this year. I'm wearing it today. It just gives you the perfect glow to the skin without being a chunky glitter. I really like it when my highlighter looks buttery. As you know, I like a buttery base and this gives me just that. I think it looks beautiful. I do have it on my inner corner as well. Let me know if you do this. I always use my highlighter for my face as my inner corner highlighter. I won't use my eyeshadow, like sometimes I will, but I'll always amp it up with my face highlighter. But this is just such a beautiful champagne highlight. It's not too blinding, but it's glowy enough that it just looks so eye-catching on the skin. It is a staple in my routine. I love this. My next highlight is from Makeup by Mario. This is the shade Golden. I love this because it's not super yellowy gold. It's more like a champagne gold. And what gravitated me towards Makeup by Mario's highlighters is just how skin-like and buttery they are. It's not like any highlighter I've ever felt before. It feels so pillowy soft and it goes on so beautifully on the skin. It is a blinding highlight if you do build it up, but I just go in with one swipe and it gives me the perfect model glow. It's like a modest glow. Like, are you glowing? Do you have highlighter on or are you just perfect? And I feel like that encompasses Makeup by Mario's brand as a whole. Like, are you wearing makeup or are you just flawless? Because buttery, buttery. You know what I want to do? I want to try his bronzers. Maybe, maybe that'll be my new bronzer fave of 2022. Let me know in the comments down below if you've tried any other of Makeup by Mario's complexion products and what I should try out next. Finally, the last complexion product, and this might be my favorite complexion product, simply because I went through an entire one in 2021 and I repurchased it. So y'all know I was using that like nobody's business. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. And girl. It smells so good. And it's just, it gives you the perfect amount of set. It makes you feel luxurious. 
It makes you look glowy, but not oily. It feels good on the skin. It increases the longevity of your makeup. It amps up your complexion. It is lock it in, foolproof, flawless, beautiful, dewy, glowy, hydrating setting. It like, need I say more? This is phenomenal. And this was sold out in Sephora for a while. So if you have not tried this, stop using whatever setting spray you're using and go out and purchase this bad boy. Tell them Emily sent you. Tell them that you are looking for magic in a bottle and it is this. Charlotte Tilbury. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you how much I love this stuff. I get excited to spray it on my skin because it smells so good. Like, it just... I feel rejuvenated. I feel flawless. I feel dazzling. This is just, why am I getting so excited over your setting spray? I just love it so much. That's how you know. That's how you know it's good because it makes me genuinely happy from the inside out. I cannot believe we got through complexion. I feel like I've been talking for like 5,000 hours. That was a lot. I really love my complexion products, as you can tell. So I have not one, not two, but five brow products to talk about. Five. Why am I like this? So, two, laminate my brows, keep them in place so they don't move, so they don't stray, so they give me that feathered look. I love these two brow gels, the Patrick Ta Lamination Brow Gel and the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. I've been through maybe four of these this year. This is my first one of the Patrick Ta, but it does the job beautifully and I find that it makes my brows look fluffier than this one does. And the brow lamination trend, I've been through a whirlwind with my brows this year. I loved them flat to my skin. Like, give me the lamination look, no texture, no fluff, nothing. But then halfway through the year, I was like, I need a little bit of fluff. And then the other day, I FaceTimed my old artistry trainer, good friend, makeup dad, mentor, love of my life, Jay Brandon, and then he made me fall in love with the fluff in the front of the brow once again. So now we're fluffier than we've ever been in the past like year and a half. So Patrick Ta gives you a good fluff. This gives you a really, really bomb lamination. The thing about these guys is not only is the formula really, really awesome, it's the brush. The brush on this one is so flat that you could laminate your brows down. And then the side has the bristles to brush the product through your brows. So the brush on this guy is fantastic for that faux lamination. And I honestly think that on Sephora's website, this is marketed as a lamination gel now because so many people use it for that exact purpose. So this is fantastic. And I'm sure a lot of you already know, but this is the bomb. And then Patrick Ta's lamination gel is so interesting because it's like fibrous, but I love the brush on this one too. Cause again, it has the flat side for you to go ahead and flatten down your brows and laminate. But then the bristles on this one kind of gives you more of a fluffy brow effect. So you have more playroom and wiggle room with this one. But again, I love it. I can't say enough good things about it. I'm like so far gone from like the soap brow trend because like these gels just make your life so easy. Either one, Benefit or Patrick Ta, I highly recommend you give these guys a try because fabulous. I will say for like aesthetic purposes, I probably like the packaging of Patrick Ta a little bit more, but I mean to each their own. I've been through like four or five of these this year, so clearly don't care about the packaging that much. And then to fill in, sculpt and define the brow. I love and forever will love and be loyal to and probably never use anything ever again other than the Anastasia Brow Wiz and the Brow Pen. Oh my gosh. So brow Wiz is a detail tool. It is not to fill in the brow completely because there's not a lot of pencil here. So you don't want to use up all of the product, right? You don't want to go through this bad boy in like three weeks. So I use it to go under my brow and just shape it a little bit, but I don't go in and fully fill in. I'll just shape. Granted, I could use brow definer to do that, but I like how small this is because I'm just filling in the sparse areas. I'm not completely sculpting out my brow anymore like the old trends in like 2016, 2017, where we were sculpting it out and carving it out. No, no, not anymore. I'm just filling in where needed. And then once I'm done with this guy, I use the shade medium brown. I go in with brow pen in medium brown. And this, I just go in and I do little hair strokes. I love that it's a brush tip. Mine is frayed a little bit, but I could still work with it. Just be careful how you cap it 
but I love that you could just get in and lightly flick in those brow hairs. And then in the front, I'll just flick right up and it is perfect. It never fails me. I think I have a brow routine on my YouTube and on my Instagram. So if you wanna check those out, go ahead. I do do my brows like ever so slightly differently. If you want me to do an updated brow routine for the two tiny different things that I do now, I could definitely do that. But the differences is like so minor, you probably can't even notice that I do anything different anyway. So I will link my brow tutorial down below. But brow pen from Anastasia, when this launched, I was scared at first because I was like a brow pen. But then when I started using it, I was like, oh girl, a brow pen, okay. And this is my second one. And then the brow is, I've been through like eight of those. Like I can't even, amazing products. Lastly for the brows, and then also to like clean up eyeliner, basically this is a magic brush. This is 7B from Anastasia. I exclusively use this with concealer on the back of my hand. I'll kind of like put concealer on both sides and then I'll pinch it and then I'll go into my brow in the front and then I'll create little negative space. So I learned this trick from Jay Brandon. He is fantastic. He is a brow whiz. <laughs> Literally, he's a brow whiz. <laughs> and I will flick in little tiny bits of concealer to create negative space in the brow. And that gives you truly fluffy brows because you're getting rid of any blocky, harsh lines and you're creating a soft feathered effect. And I just, I love it. 7B, I recommend to everyone. Cause like, do you see how thin this brush is? It is so incredibly thin and precise. And then if you have to clean up your eyeliner too, you could just go right ahead in and clean it up. It is so razor sharp. I have like three of these on backup. I love it. Really, if you want bomb brows, you need to get everything that I said because ain't no game like a good brow game, okay? Okay, golden ratio method, all right. Brows are very important to me. We are moving on to the eyes. So for eye primer, this comes as no shock to you if you've been on my channel for a while. This is MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. I love the paint pots. I love the way they cancel out any hyperpigmentation. My eyeshadow never gets oily. It controls the oils really well. I've tried other eye primers in the past. I never really understood the purpose of an eye primer until I started using this. This is fantastic. I used to use concealer and then I set it with a powder, but the thing with that is the eyeshadow won't hold as well because you're just flicking powder over powder. So it kind of dusts it away. This holds the eyeshadow really beautifully and it just controls the oils. So if I had to recommend you an eye primer, I would just recommend you a paint pot. They are absolutely fantastic. Tried and true, never failed me. Now we are getting into eyeshadow palettes. I have four and I will say I did have a top five favorite eyeshadow video that I did film in 2021. That was a little bit of cool tone, a little bit of warm tone, staple eyeshadow palettes that I used all the time. It changed a little bit. I still love those eyeshadow palettes so much and one of them is actually in the video and then three of them have changed. These are just palettes that I grab in the morning when I'm going to work and I need something quick and easy or I have to go to church on a Sunday and I just need simple makeup, like reliable makeup. So these are the palettes that I go towards. First one is the one with the most color in it. This is the Anastasia Primrose palette. This was holiday for 2021. The warm tones in this palette are incredible. Are you kidding me? Fire Opal and Sparkling Amber are like me in an eyeshadow. I mean, like literally stunning. Um, other shades that I love that I haven't really even dipped into. Primrose, when I swatched it, I loved that shade. Have I dipped into it? No. You guys need to hold me accountable and tell me to do more looks with this palette because this seriously... I grab this and I have the perfect warm tone smoky eye in all of two minutes. It is just so beautiful. And what I love about the shadow palette is that the Anastasia shadows are finally ginormous. Like, do you know how fast I go through the soft glam palette because of how small those pans are? And these ones are ginormous. So thank you, Anastasia, for making this palette. This is so beautiful. I haven't even taken like the wrapper off here because I don't want to ruin the palette. I also love the packaging, the size of the palette. Everything about this is just so sleek and beautiful. And when it came out, and I saw everyone doing reviews on it. I was like anxiously waiting for this palette to come up to my doorstep. And when it did, you already know, I stepped into Fire Opal, Rouge, Honey, 
rose water like these shades those shades are my tones i love i love a good warm smoky eye and i love that anastasia eyeshadows are reliable they're pigmented they do give you some kickback i will say that but just use a little bit of product they give you so much kickback because they are so pigmented so when you're using this palette just remember you don't have to dig into the shadow because you're going to ruin it do not do that be an artiste start off small and build up slowly and this palette is just beautiful and luxe and perfect and i think that you should definitely add this to your card the next palette i'm going to talk about is just a palette that y'all already know i use so much and it's so dodgy at this point this is the artist couture supreme nudes palette i hit pan on one of the shades this is just a tried and true perfect smoky eye perfect every day perfect anytime palette artist couture is one of my favorite brands I love Mac Daddy so much because he really does interact with you on Instagram. Like I'll DM him and he'll be like DMing me back, liking my stuff. He is so incredibly sweet and his brand is so fire. So if you haven't tried the Supreme Nudes palette, please go ahead and try it because these shades are so buttery, so beautiful, and they are for the everyday girl or the super glam girl. I think I have a tutorial on my YouTube where you could see the palette in action, but it is just absolutely so beautiful. Definitely check it out if you haven't already and go tell Mac Daddy I sent you. Tell him I said hi because he is just, he's fabulous. When the brand owner is cool, you have my loyalty. Artist Couture, Supreme Nudes, Mac Daddy, love you. Love you so much. The last two palettes that I'm going to talk about are a combo of what I have on my eyes today. I have on some of the Melt Brunette palette. This is just the perfect eyeshadow palette for the everyday girl or if you want to play with some like gunmetal and copper tones. I just think this is so reliable. I went on a couple of like small trips in 2021 and when I went I just brought this palette because it is so compact. It is so easy to use and the shades are beautiful. I like that it's not super duper warm. I like that it has a little bit more cool tone in it because when you just want a simple eye contour, which is what I have in my crease today, I think it is so beautiful. And Melt Cosmetics eyeshadows, like if I could put every Melt eyeshadow palette in this video, I would because y'all know I love Melt so much. The brands, the founders, everything about it. It's no secret here. But this palette is just so easy. And you know what else I love this year that I didn't even think to put in here? The Petite Stack. Um, was awesome too and it was more cool toned but their cool tone shadows are just bomb like I love this the Mary Jane palette they're turning me into a cool tone eyeshadow person and I never anticipated or expected this so thank you Melt. Last but not least the Patrick Ta Major Dimension eyeshadow palette this is so fire I especially love the shimmer shades in the palette that's what I have on my lid today. I love that they're a beautiful eyeshadow topper and they just make any look super sparkly. Whenever I'm wearing this palette, I always get asked what I'm wearing and the mattes are super easy to blend and reliable. The cream shadows are also really pretty. If I'm doing a smoky liner look, I'll prep my wing with that and then I'll smoke it out with one of the deeper shades. But this palette is just so stunning. And when it first came out, I was like, do I need another neutral eyeshadow palette for as expensive as this is because it is expensive it's like 60 something dollars but the palette was so good and I used so many of the shades I think the only one that I haven't touched yet is this one and now that I see that it's untouched I want to play with it do you do that too do you have a bunch of palettes where you're like you use everything except that one shade and then you wonder why you don't use that one shade it's like silly but Regardless of that, all the shades in this palette are beautiful and I definitely pick this palette up quite often. I have the shades in my crease, on my lid, on my lower lash line. It is just so easy to use and so reliable. And Patrick Ta Beauty really just came in swinging this year with all of their fantastic launches, like their complexion products, their eye products. I'm really, really impressed with the pigmentation of everything and how everything performs. The brands that I'm mentioning also, like, the launches that have come out this year with these brands is incredible. Not only do I love the products, but I love seeing the brand progress and grow and just pop off with their launches. So amazing, amazing eyeshadow palettes, all of them. Let me know which ones you're looking forward to trying this year or anyone that you're going to add to your cart because of this video. I would love to know if you love these palettes just as much as I do. Next, I want to get into eyeliners. First, I'm going to talk about the Patrick Ta Precision Gel Eyeliners. I used to have the brown one as well, but I completely ran out of it. And I'm pretty much out of the black one. And then this is the cream. The formula is just fabulous. It doesn't move. It doesn't smudge. It doesn't budge. 
and it's so creamy and pigmented, which is amazing because my eyes run and water a lot. So whenever I put eyeliner on, it's like down to my chin before I know it. And these liners stay all day. Don't move, don't smudge. They are absolutely fantastic. I don't find that they ball up on my inner corner and I get like the little gunk. We all know what that is. And then on the outer corner, doesn't do any of that and they're just reliable. They don't irritate my eyes. The only thing about these liners that I'm not crazy about is the fact that if you use it every single day, you're out of it in like a month and it is $26. It is an expensive eyeliner. But I mean, for the formula, I would repurchase it. I would just be really sparing with it because it is expensive to go through $26 of an eyeliner in a month. That like when I ran out of the brown one, I was like, that's it, that's all that's in there. But I mean, they are fabulous. Whenever I have a nude waterline, it is the Patrick Ta Cream Gel Liner and I always get comments on it. So if you want to try a really beautiful formula and you're not afraid of the price, go right ahead and try it out. But it is just fabulous. Moving on to a brown eyeliner that I really love, the Makeup by Mario Perfect Brown Eyeliner. I like the fact that all of his lip liners and eyeliners come with a little brush on the end to smudge out, but I got this liner because I ran out of the Patrick Ta one. This comes with so much more product for the price that you're spending, and the color is beautiful. It is a rich chocolate brown, which is exactly what I want in a brown eyeliner, and this also lasts beautifully throughout the day. I haven't tried the brightening pencil or the black eyeliner, but I'm sure the formula is just as fantastic. It lasts on you, it doesn't smudge, and that's exactly what I look for in an eyeliner. So if you're looking for an amazing brown, this is like such a perfect chocolatey brown. I'll even use this one to smudge out on my lash line and create a smoky wing or a smudged out lash look. And it is the perfect brown every time. So the name is really suiting for the product. Lastly, liquid liner. Anastasia liquid liner is my baby. When this first came out, I worked for the brand and when I saw the brush, I was initially like, what the heck? This is not going to give me any precision. This is going to be so flimsy to use. I'm not going to like it. And it is my favorite eyeliner of all time. I'm wearing it today. Every time I wear a wing, I'm wearing this or I'm wearing my brow pen in medium brown and I'll do my wing with that and I'll just put a brown shadow over it but this is so matte and it lasts and it doesn't smudge and it's a quick dry liner and it is just matte. I don't like a shiny wing. If I wanted a shiny liner, I put glitter on it. I don't like it when it looks like wet or waxy, not my cup of tea. This is the perfect matte black liner and it is really precise. I will say the more you play with it and the more you practice with it, the better your wings come out. I'm living proof for that. My wings are literally my favorite part of my makeup and years ago, I was not a wing person. Now I'm a wing person and it's all thanks to Anastasia's liquid liner. For mascara this year, I only have one mascara to talk about. I bought this on a whim, it was on sale at Sephora, and I was like, you know what, Jamie Genevieve loves it, and if she loves it, I'll give it a go. It is the Urban Decay Lash Freak Mascara. This wand is so interesting. I still like don't understand it that much, but the formula is fantastic. It's volumizing, it's buildable, it's lengthening, it's thickening, and it does not smudge on my lower lashes. My lower lashes are really long, so if I'm talking and I'm making expressions and my lower lashes hit my skin, I will get the dreaded raccoon eye, but not with this formula. It is really, really awesome. So if you're also someone that doesn't like a mascara that smudges, definitely give this one a go. I will say if you're just using it for your bottom lashes, wipe off the excess on the tube because of the way that the wand is, it can get really like clumpy. I don't mind if I have to maneuver around the wand just because the formulation of this is so phenomenal. So Urban Decay Lash Freak, I highly recommend this guy. Next, I want to quickly touch on false lashes. My favorite lashes of the year are no surprise. I'm wearing them today. Lily Lashes in the style Miami. They just work really well for my eyes. They're a big lash, but they're not an overwhelming lash. It looks good with the smoky eye, with the wing. It's just my favorite lash of all time. Another pair from Lily that I really do love are the Style Rome. I love these guys. If I'm wearing a wing or I want more of a fox eye look, these are really, really stunning. And Lily Lashes are just a reliable lash. They have been my favorite lash company for years and years and years and years and years, and I love them so much. 
If you want to purchase some Lily Lashes, you can use my discount code EMILY20 to get some money off your purchase. Lily Lashes are also all faux mink now, and the quality is still just as beautiful, if not more beautiful than it was before. What I like about the faux mink so much is that they're even more durable than they were before, so you get more wears out of them. Can't recommend these lashes enough. They are just so amazing. And again, the company is fantastic. So definitely check out Lily Lashes. If you can believe it, we are on the last category, the category of the lip and then we're done. If I'm just going to work, odds are I'm not wearing a lip because I don't like to wear makeup under the mask. But if I'm working from home or I'm going out to dinner, I am wearing lipstick. And I am so obsessed with these lip products. None of them are liquid lipstick, by the way, which is so weird for me because I was that liquid lipstick girl. But this year is all about the lipstick bullet and the creamy lip liner, like I'm obsessed. So first lip liner I wanna talk about is Milk Cosmetics Perfectionist Lip Pencil in the shade Sepia. This is a beautiful nude. Like it contours the lips like nobody else does. It is so gorgeous. It looks good with so many nude shades. I'm so obsessed with this color. And the formula, another shade that I love a lot is Cashmere. I just can't find it to show you and I'm super upset and I'm sorry, but the Perfectionist lip pencils are gorgeous. The nude shades are so gorgeous. They also have a really beautiful red color called Thrill. Love that one too. I I loved the formula of their old lip liners and I love the formula of these lip liners even more. And I love the wooden pencil. I'm not a big like plastic or retractable lip liner type of person just because I feel like they dry out so quickly and get so crusty so quickly. I find that the lip liner stays creamier in the wooden component. So overall really beautiful lip pencil and I highly recommend Milk Cosmetics lip products. Next lip liners I'm going to talk about are Makeup by Mario lip liners in the shade Travis and the shade Dimitri. So originally I picked up Travis just because I love a brown lip liner. I think it looks beautiful with a light nude lipstick and Travis is a little bit more cool toned than Sepia is. So that is Sepia and that is Travis. So this one is a little bit more on the cool tone side but I love both of them individually because they are different, right? All of our needs are different. I love the way this lip liner formula glides on the lips. I'm wearing it on my lips today. And then I love the brush too because I could just go in and diffuse the lip liner before I put the lipstick on. Sometimes if I can't do that, I get that line of lip liner to lipstick like ratio and I don't love that. So I love the way I'm able to diffuse this lip liner out. And then also Dimitri. So Dimitri I picked up because I don't even know why I picked it up. I think somebody swatched it on Instagram and I was like, you know what? I think I need that. It is a lighter nude shade. It's right over there. And I use this on the outer corners of my lip when I'm using Travis to line the center because it gives you a more pouty lip look and it gives you a better nude in my opinion. I find that if I use a darker nude all over the lip, I don't get as light of a nude color as I want. Like if I'm wearing a pale nude, I want a pale nude, but I also want the dimension of a deeper lip liner to contour and make my lips look fuller. So I kind of do a little cocktail of these two and I think they work really beautifully together and on their own. I'm such a big, big fan of Makeup by Mario's lip products. I think he blew it out of the water when they first came out. Like everyone was like, Makeup by Mario came out with lipsticks. And I was like, but are they really good? And they are really good. They're so fantastic. Speaking of Makeup by Mario lipsticks, Moving on to lipstick favorites, my first one is going to be Makeup by Mario lipstick in the shade Sierra. This is what she looks like. Like it's the perfect like peachy nude, but more on the nude side than peach. I will swatch it for you. So that's what it looks like. And I know Sierra. So I used to work with Sierra when we worked at Pat McGrath together, but when Makeup by Mario made a lipstick after her, I was like, that is so cool. And I literally bought it just to support her. I didn't anticipate loving it as much as I would, but Sierra is the queen of nudes. So hello, I'm not surprised that you made a bomb lipstick. So congratulations, Sierra, on the lipstick. This is my 2021 fave. I love the formula. I'm wearing it today. Obviously, it's my fave. Next lipstick I'm going to talk about is the Charlotte Tilbury Kissing Lipstick in the shade KKW. Is this not the perfect nude? Is this not the perfect nude? Is this not the perfect nude? And the packaging, like I love Charlotte Tilbury packaging. 
N formula. So I have it right in the center of my lip today just to give me more of like that nude pout. I am a lipstick cocktail person. So yes, I am wearing two lip liners and two lipsticks. It is a toxic trait of mine and I am not working on it because it just looks so good. So this is what KKW looks like swatched. It is super beautiful, super nude. I love it. And the formula is amazing. So I got this during the Sephora sale. And the crazy thing is this was selling out like hotcakes. I literally had to put one on hold and was like, nobody sell this because this one, this one's mine. And I'm so glad I picked it up. It is literally probably one of my favorite Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks that I own, if not my favorite. Next lipstick I'm going to talk about is MAC Blankety. So this is another recommendation from my friend Anna. She recommended it a couple of years ago. And fun fact, this is the only lipstick that I've completely gone through and had to repurchase. This is the perfect nude pink. You could wear it with a pink lip liner, with a brown lip liner. It looks good no matter what you're putting under it. It just gives you that perfect like nude pink pout. And it is there amplified formula so it is really creamy and really pigmented overall such a beautiful shade if you like a nude but you like more pink nudes blankety is going to be perfect for you last two lipsticks are from melt cosmetics they relaunched their lipstick formula the packaging is really cute the bullet is really cute i have the shades paris fling and zaddy I always feel weird saying that, zaddy. Love the embossed logo on the lipstick. I think that is so stinking cool. But this is the shade Zaddy. It's the perfect nude. As I say with all of the lipsticks that I've swatched, it's the perfect nude. And then I'll swatch Paris Fling for you. So this is what it looks like. It's a little bit more peachy, whereas Zaddy is more of like that pale pink nude but these lipsticks glide on so beautifully and they are matte, but they are not drying. Similar to the Makeup by Mario texture. I love a matte lipstick, but I don't want it to be drying. So that is Zaddy and that is Paris Fling. Again, they're not drying mattes whatsoever. As you could see, I have a deeper lip liner and pale nude lipstick addiction, but I'm not mad about it. These combos are slamming. You're gonna have the best nude lips if you try out any one of these. I love a good nude, and these lipsticks and lip liners are perfect for just that. I cannot believe I got through explaining all of those products. I hope I did a good job. This is my first favorites video, and that was so much to get through. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. This was super fun to get through. I love recommending products and having products recommended to me. This is what makeup's all about, trying new things, falling in love with new products, having a thousand different shades of nude, even though it all looks the same on the lip, but you know, you know how it is. Let me know in the comments down below what are some of your 2021 favorites. Let me know if any of the products that I recommended are some of your favorite products already. I would love to know if you love the same things that I do. And also let me know what you want to see next because new year, new videos. I'm so excited to create more content for you guys this year. This is like the year that I flourish. I can feel it and I'm so excited. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. I be sure to thumbs up the video if you did like today's video. Be sure to leave me a comment down below letting me know what you want to see next. And don't forget to subscribe before you leave because it means the absolute world to me. And I appreciate each and every single one of you. And I'm so excited to grow this channel. I don't know. I feel like the small wins mean so much to me. And like seeing my little channel grow and interacting with you guys is so fun. I can't wait to edit this video and get it up. ASAP. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to edit and get this up as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed this video just as much as I enjoyed filming it. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.